Sir, what is good, Regis recipients? How are y'all doing today? Let me know in the comment section. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of Regis Reflections. Y'all already know each and every episode we have a different athlete here on the podcast. And this week, we got Miss Charlotte Bender. Say what's up to the people, Charlotte. What's up? How are you doing today? How's your mental on a scale of 1 to 10? I'm great. 10 today. How are you? 10? I'm at a 10, too. Honestly, the weather is so perfect. Like, outside, it's actually sunny, and it hasn't been like that in so long. So, and I'm just ready for spring break, too. Ready for just, just vibe, just relax, relax. So, Regis recipients, for you all who do not know, Charlotte here is on the Notre Dame cross-country team. Is there a certain district you do in cross-country, Charlotte? Um, I'm a distance runner, so I do, like, 5K, 10K. Um, Wait, so you, like, run 5K miles or, like? 5K, like, like that's three miles. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Kilometer, yeah. Okay, I, I thought it was, okay, okay, yeah. kilometers. So what got you into cross-country, Charlotte, from your childhood or whenever you started? So when I was, like, fifth grade, probably, I did field hockey. Mm -hmm. And I love to run during it. And so I was kind of just running the entire time. And I didn't even, like, wasn't really actually, like, playing the actual game. But I, like, wanted to just run. So my mom was like, you should try cross country instead because they were both fall. So I started running cross country in, like, sixth grade. And then from there, I just had, like, success with it. And I did pretty well in middle school and kept going. And, yeah, I kept going throughout high school. So what would you say, what is the difference between, would you say, track and field and cross country from what you've seen or not? Yeah, so I never even knew the difference. I always played lacrosse in the spring until I got, until like even like senior year of high school, junior year of high school, because of COVID, I didn't do lacrosse. Um, and so all I ever did was cross country. And then I realized like track, I, track is definitely different because it's on a flat surface and you're just running in circles instead of out on a course um but i mean they're both great and but i've only really grown up doing cross country wow so do you i have a do you genuinely enjoy like loving to run like do you like you really love to run in a sense i do yes i, I loved it when i was even younger and i kind of just would go on runs for fun um as you get older i feel like things get kind of more pressure and stuff like that as you know you're people know your name or you have to run um like to compete but um it's still enjoyable wow honestly well, interesting i've never met anyone that actually enjoys running like that yeah. <laughs> so in high school i know you did cross country as well so could you just talk a little bit about that experience of running cross country in high school yeah it was great i mean right when um i started as a freshman i did pretty well and so I got to go out to Oregon, um, like for like a Nike national meet. And that's when I really like fell in love with it and like got to see everybody and they give you all this cool gear. They fly you out there. They treat you really well. And like you could see the campus and that kind of got me really excited about the next like four years and everything with running. Um, then from there, it was just, it was all really good. I got to go back there. COVID was a little tough cause, um, couldn't really do any of those meets, but I was fortunate enough to like have like a something called the Garden State Track Club in New Jersey. And so they put on meets for us and I had like a lot of su success in those. And so that was that was a fun time. That's good. That's good. So you did cross country in high school and then you transitioned to even doing cross country here at the University of Notre Dame. So could you just talk a little bit about the differences from tra tra cross country in high school to now cross country here on the collegiate level? Yeah, I mean, for me, I never really had a team that I like could run with um, and a group of girls that I could run with. So that was like the main difference is have people to run with and people who are like really, really good at it as well. And like being surrounded by people that um, challenge you in practice and you go from also just like kind of always being up there at the top and then to realizing that like, there are a lot of other people like that. And so that is like, it's a fun thing. It's also tough, but um, it's like great to have people to push you. So you would say that coming out of high school, 
you were probably top of the top here for cross country coming out of New Jersey. And then once you got to Notre Dame, there were also people at that same level as well. So you weren't just the only one, would you say, in a sense? Yeah, exactly. Wow. So how did you just handle going? How did you handle that mentally of you're not the only one who's the top of the top in cross country or in distance being here at Notre Dame? How did you handle that mentally? Yeah, well, the transition has been, like, tough in general. Um just because I had some like overtraining things, um, mainly like senior year of high school and then that transitioned. And so my body was kind of getting a little tired. Um, so I was just also kind of dealing with that and didn't even kind of think as much about other people at the time. And like, I knew that I was like struggling to like run at how I used to. Um, so I was mainly dealing with that. And, but it was also, for me, so then at that time, then it was pretty motivating for all the other people to, you know, see them running so well because I needed that. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. That's good. So those other people kind of motivated you and got you out of that kind of in a hole in a sense and brought you back to the light and helped you get better. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Team is, team is. So we and you both know Notre Dame is an academic, rigorous school. They demand our best each, each and every single day. So Notre Dame is already a hard enough school already. But on top of that, for certain people like you on this campus, you are, are a D1 athlete collegiate level. How do you balance being a D1 athlete and being on the cross-country team as well as being attending the University of Notre Dame as such an academic rigor school? Yeah, I mean, I always, I feel like my high school was uh, pretty tough. And so it kind of set me up for uh, hard school like this and um, they do a great job with like helping you out and as a freshman um, we have study hall so for like two hours every day we'd have to go and sit there and get our work done so that forced me to kind of get on a schedule of doing my work um, and also just being here everybody is always so like work focused and you know we all kind of go to the library that's it's kind of becomes a social thing <laughs> So it's kind of become like something fun to do during the week, almost as sad as that sounds. Um, but that kind of like gets me motivated to, or, you know, and able to get my work done is like being surrounded by everybody at this campus who's so um, invested in their work. Wow, that's, that's very interesting. So what is your major here at the University of Notre Dame? American Studies. American Studies. So what are you trying to, to do with that in the future? Um, so I also have like a digital marketing minor. Mm. And so hopefully something in like the marketing field mm. is what I'd like to do. Um, do you see do you see yourself continue to do cross country in the future? Is that an end goal for you? Or are you just kind of riding it out up until co the end of college? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think right now it's kind of just um, becomes become something that's like more for fun. Um, it used to be a big goal of mine to like, you know, go to the Olympics and stuff like that. But I I think at this point it's more um just for fun. I just need, you know, have fun with it. So how did you just handle that mindset of you wanted to go to the Olympics when you're younger to now being, you know, it's kind of an activity that I still enjoy and love for, but I'm not striving for the Olympics. How do you just go about that mentally? Yeah, I think kind of just going to college and growing up, you know, my mindset has changed. Um kind of have like opened up a new perspective and met new people um, and just starting to think of different futures and pasts and everything. And so that's kind of where. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Place. Interesting. So you've been doing cross country for quite some time now. Has there ever been a certain practice or certain meet where it just wasn't your way, where you weren't the best of yourself? And if so, how were you able to handle yourself and get yourself out of that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Senior year of high school, I had like a, qualifying me for like this national race and I really wasn't feeling good it was when I was like over training and struggling and I didn't even end up finishing the race because um yeah I just really wasn't feeling well and that was really tough for me because it was like at the time when people I feel like kind of knew my name and like you know knew I was gonna run in the race and so I kind of I was pretty embarrassed after it and just like wanted to kind of like walk away and whatever um and I was but then I got in the car and with my mom and I was definitely upset. But then I realized that you have to know that people really don't care as much as you think they do. And while people are rooting for you and wish the best for you, it's also you need to just like focus on yourself and know that if it wasn't your day, it's OK. And 
I don't know. At the end of the day, I was going to go home anyways, probably watch a movie and hang out, and that didn't change. So I think that's kind of... Once I got through that, I kind of realized that, like, you'll be okay if, you know, you have a bad race or something. You'll get through it. Everything's going to be okay at the end of the day. Exactly. I like that mentality. I like that mentality. So um, one final question before we wrap things up, Miss Charlotte. What advice would you give to the people out there on their mental health journey? Yeah, for me, I think to make sure to have fun, that's something really important to me. I mean, I think if you just, like, obviously there's work you need to do in life. Um, but, yeah, make sure to have time for fun and enjoy activities and stuff like that. I think gets me more excited every day. And really, like, I just kind of think a lot of life needs to, you need to have fun. And, yeah. Uh, just have fun. And then they simple. What? I said that simple, just have fun at the end of the day? Exactly. At the end of the like day, that. Like, Charlotte the best, y'all. Charlotte the best. Well, <laughs> Regis Sippings, you heard it right there from Miss Charlotte Benner. Charlotte, thank you again for joining me on this episode of Regis Reflections. I hope all is well with you and continues to be. Regis recipients, remember, it's okay to not be okay. You matter. It's the boy, J.D. Oh. <laughs>